Hello students, the topic that I'm going to discuss today is General Characters and Classification of Phylum Platyhelminthes. The term Phylum Platyhelminthes is derived from two Greek words, namely Plati meaning flat and Helminthes meaning worms. So they are commonly known as the flatworms. The term Platyhelminthes was proposed by Gegenbohr in the year 1859. There are about 13,000 species of phylum Platyhelminthes. Coming to the general characters, the flatworms, they are dorsoventrally flattened. That means they are flat on both the dorsal as well as the ventral side. So when you look at the flatworms, they are flat ventrally as well as dorsally. So they are commonly known as the flatworms. The next important character is body is unsegmented in almost all the flatworms except for the class Cestoda. Flatworms may be free living, for example, in the case of planaria, or they may be parasite. So when we talk about parasite, there are two types of parasite. One is called the ectoparasite and the other one is called the endoparasite. The flatworms are usually endoparasite. So what is meant by endoparasite? It means that they are parasites which are found inside a host body. So when we look at the flatworms, they are mostly endoparasitic in nature. That means they take the nutrition or the nourishment from other living organisms. Next important point is they have organ system of organization. So when we talk about organ system of organization, they may be cellular level, tissue level, organ or organ system level of organization. So phylum platyhelminthes belongs to organ level of organization. So a group of cells, they form a tissue. A group of tissues, they form an organ. So that is the level they are having. So when we look at the phylogeny of the animal kingdom, poriferans, cylinterata, nidaria, they were having cellular as well as tissue level of organization. So phylum platyhelminthes is the first phylum to have organ system of organization. Next important character is they are triploblastic. Triploblastic means they have three germ layers. They are outer ectoderm, middle mesoderm, and inner endoderm. So they are the first organism to have triploblastic level of organization. The poriferans, the cylinderates, as well as the tenophorans, they were having diploblastic level of organization. So that is regarding some generalized characters. Another important character is that they are bilaterally symmetrical. So what is meant by bilateral symmetrical means the body can be divided into two identical left and right halves only in one plane. So when we say bilaterally means when we divide the organism left and right are having identical in nature. Phylum platyhelminthes, they are acelomate. So what is meant by acelomate means that the body cavity is completely absent. So what is meant by body cavity? It is the space between the body wall and the gut. So this space is filled up by a tissue that is known as the parenchyma. So there is no body cavity and hence the phylum platyhelminthes are known as a silomets. Coming to the another important character is the digestive system 
is completely absent in all the endoparasites, in all the parasitic forms, but they may be present in free living forms. So when they are present, they are said to be incomplete. Incomplete means only the mouth part is present, but there is no anus. Then respiration is by means of simple diffusion through their body surface. There is no skeleton system as well as no circulatory system. The next important character is the excretion as well as osmoregulation is done by the phlegm cells. The phlegm cells are also known as protonephridia or solenocytes. So why they are called as phlegm cells? Because the cilia of the phlegm cells, they flicker like the fire. So the name phlegm cells was given to that of the flickering in nature. The next important point is nervous system is primitive and ladder-like. So ladder-like means it is just very simple and in the form of two longitudinal nerves, cords, which are connected together by the transverse nerves. So it resembles like that of a ladder. Then sexes are said to be united or they are said to be hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite means both male as well as female sexual organs are present in the same organism. But in certain cases, although they are having hermaphrodite nature, they show cross fertilization in most of the cases. Development may be direct or indirect. Direct means without any larval stages. Say for example in the case of free living forms like the planaria. Whereas in the case of endoparasites, they are said to be indirect. That means they are having a large number of larval stages. Say for example in the case of fasciola, that is the liver fluke, they are having many larval stages like the miracidium, circaria, metacircaria, etc. Whereas in the case of platyhelminthes like the tapeworm, they are having larval stages like the hexagonal larvae, cysticircus larvae, etc. Then fertilization may be internal. So these are some of the generalized characters of the phylum platyhelminthes. Coming to the examples of phylum platyhelminthes, we have the planaria or dusacea, which is a free living form. Another important example is the fasciola hepatica, that is the liver fluke, which is found in ship. Another example is the tenia solium, that is the pork tapeworm and echinococcus, that is the dog tapeworm. Coming to the classification of phylum platyhelminthes. Phylum platyhelminthes is divided into three classes, class turbellaria, class trematoda and class cestoda. So the first class is class turbellaria. This class turbellaria is commonly known as the planarians. They are free living organisms which are found may, mainly in fresh water. Some may be also found in marine water. Their body is dorsoventrally flattened. Hooks and suckers are completely absent. They may be terrestrial, marine, or freshwater. They are mostly hermaphrodite 
and it includes examples such as planaria as well as convoluta. Coming to the second class, class Trematoda. They are mostly parasitic in nature. They may be ectoparasite or endoparasite. So they are commonly known as the flukes. Similarly, they are unsegmented, body dorsoventrally flattened. The body may be covered by cuticles. Hooks and suckers are usually present. So that can be referred to the diagram as I've already given. There is no asexual reproduction and it includes examples such as the fasciola hepatica, cystosoma as well as polystoma. The third and final class is class Cestoda. They are exclusively parasitic in nature and they are all endoparasite. So they are commonly known as the tapeworm such as the poke tapeworm or the dog tapeworm. They have hooks and suckers and with the help of these hooks and suckers they are able to attach to the intestine of the host and derive nutrition or nourishment from the host. The head of the tapeworm are known as collects. So they are provided with hooks and suckers and with the help of these they derive their nourishment. Mouth, digestive tract and sense organ are completely absent and the life cycle is complicated with many larval stages and it includes examples such as tenia solium, the poke tapeworm or echinococcus, the dog tapeworm. So this is regarding the classification and general characters of the phylum platyhelminthes. So if any students are having any queries, you can contact in the link given below.